Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to review Lost and Found by Katherine Schultz. This book was published by Random House in 2022, and my hardcover copy that I purchased with my own money comes in at 256 pages. The author of this book is a staff writer for The New Yorker, and she actually won the Pulitzer Prize for feature writing back in 2016 for a piece she wrote for The New Yorker on the threat of earthquakes on the west coast of the United States, and she is also the author of the psychology nonfiction book, Being wrong. But Lost and Found is her first memoir, and in this book she discusses losing her beloved father, but also meeting the woman who would go on to become her wife within the same 18-month period. Both of those things, as well as what happened after that very intense period in her life, are discussed in this book across three sections. In the first section, the author discusses losing her father. But before she discusses the loss of him, she discusses the man that he was. He had a very traumatic early life, but he went on to lead what seemed to be, anyway, a predominantly happy adulthood. They had a very happy home life, family life. Her father was brilliant. He was vivacious and clever. He loved language. But he also had this way of losing things, like physical objects. It was one of his quirks. And then Katherine Schultz discusses the lead up to his death, him initially becoming ill, receiving increasingly aggressive medical treatments, up until the point where her family realized that he wasn't going to get well. And even if they did pursue more aggressive treatments for him, he wasn't going to return home the same man that they knew and loved. And so they decided to let him go. And Catherine, of course, discusses the day of his death and the sadness and despair that she felt and also the grief that followed her around for a long time afterward. Throughout this first section, the author's future wife, Casey Sepp, who is herself a staff writer for The New Yorker, she's also an author. She wrote the book Furious Hours, which ironically enough, I have read and I spoke about it on this channel previously. But Casey, who the author decides to refer to throughout this book is just C, she makes sporadic appearances in that first section, but we're not given any detail about her. She's just kind of a background figure. So in the second section, we basically rewind 18 months back to the moment when Catherine and Casey met, and they fell very rapidly and deeply in love. So if the first section is all about losing something, and the second section is all about finding something, then the third section takes on the only part of the title left unexplored at this point, and that's the word and represented in the title by an ampersand. The ampersand is also discussed in this section, but and is this overlooked word. It is so commonly used, but we don't really pay attention to its significance in our language. And I think this third section meant to take on the word and in two different ways, because and is a unifier. And I think it was meant to bring together the first two sections, because nothing in our life happens all by itself. We can be falling in love and losing another person we love at the exact same time. But I think that and is also meant as a continuation of the story. It's that principle of storytelling. You always say, and then, and then, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. Life doesn't stop just because we lose someone or we find someone. There's always more to the story. And this section continues the story. This is the section where we get to find out what happened after the events of those first two sections, most notably Catherine and Casey's wedding, which, by the way, I just recently found out was officiated by the one and only Helen McDonald, author of H is for Hawk. I'm not sure I've ever heard something so cool in my entire life. But even though the second section is all about finding love, there's obviously a lot of heart in that section. I found the final section to be the one that was filled with the most joy. I found it to be the most uplifting because it really makes it clear that life goes on. It goes on after grief, even though when you're in the midst of grief, it feels like you're never going to not feel that way. But it also goes on after finding love and you find out a way to go through life with this person who you found. So all three words in this book's title, lost and found are fully explored throughout this book, albeit out of order. She takes each of these words 
and really dives into what they mean in the English language, all the different things they can mean, all the different ways that we use them. If you are a word nerd, if you are into etymology, then you will love this memoir. But these deep dives into these very common words that we use all the time, but we don't frequently ponder, at least to the extent that the author does throughout this book, it's very reflective of what this book does overall. Because as the jacket copy says, and as the author herself says at one point in the book, this book is all about common experiences, familiar experiences. Most of us throughout our lives will lose someone who we really love, and we will also fall in love. But even though we hear about them all the time, they're these things that most of us will experience, you can't really know what they're going to be like until you're in that experience yourself. And when you experience it for the first time or all over again, it feels brand new. It becomes uncommon. But as typical as those experiences and those emotions may be, I was just blown away with how accurately she described everything in this book. I've gone through both of the things that she discusses in this book, and she put into words things that I could have never described and honestly would have never thought to describe. But reading this book, all of those things felt so familiar because they are common experiences. She talks about what it's like to trudge through those early days of grief and feel like it's never going to end. And even when you do come out the other side without even fully realizing that you've made it to that point, the way that grief can sneak up on you when you least expect it. But then also she talks about falling in love and all the magic that's there. You have this moment of looking at this person and just wondering, how did I find you? It seems so improbable that it feels like it must have been meant to be. It must have been written in the stars. This book is gorgeously written. It is highly literary, but I found it to be equal parts playful and profound. There's so much joy at the core of this book, even for a book that has so much heartbreak in it. The author has this innate curiosity to her as she's exploring these words. It's fun to read, even though it is absolutely heartbreaking at times. And the thing I felt the most throughout this book was gratitude. She had just found the love of her life right before she lost her father. And even though losing him was mind-bogglingly painful for her, you could feel her gratitude for having had that amazing man as a father. For a memoir, this book is surprisingly a lot more about the other people in her life than it is about the author herself. It was an interesting choice. I did enjoy it. It's just not the typical way a memoir is written, but that's fine. I always like things to be new and refreshing in the books that I read. But I did find that an interesting consequence of that fact was that I was much more able to put myself in her shoes throughout this book. Because again, these are very common experiences. And as a result, I found myself being able to fall in love with these people in her her life. Like, I still find myself missing her father now that I'm done with this book. If it wasn't clear already, let me just go ahead and say it. I absolutely loved this book. I thought everything inside of it was pretty much near perfect. I also absolutely love both the cover and the title. Obviously, I went through and told you that the title has meaning, but without spoiling anything, I'll just say that this cover has meaning as well, in addition to just being gorgeous to look at. Titles and covers are often points of contention here on my channel. I really like a book to be marketed correctly, and in this case, I think they were spot on with it. This book is amazing. The writing is spectacular. The book itself is moving, poignant, thought-provoking, but also joyful and just fun to read. I absolutely loved it. It's my first five-star read of the year. So those were my thoughts on the memoir Lost and Found. If you have read this book or if you would like to read this book, especially if I've convinced you to read this book, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you're looking for more books like this one, or if you just want to see what books I would compare this book to, please do check out the description box below for what I call the further reading section, where I will list some titles for you. And also check out the bottom of that description box for links to where you can find me everywhere across the internet 
internet, including social media like Goodreads and Instagram, where I'm the most active, if you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.